Hello and welcome to another Cavern Devlog. Um, I've been putting out these devlogs every couple weeks, and this is number five. Um, if you like to watch the progress of this game come together and be notified when it releases, subscribe and like the video. This week I worked on a couple of major systems for the game, being the upgrade system, the enemy targeting priority system, what does an enemy look to do, or what are its motives, what are its priorities, that kind of thing, and then the anomaly system with the, the logbook. This tracks how the, the roguelike sort of evolves over the course of a run and allows the player to sort of know what they're dealing with um, throughout the course of the run. But before all that, I added a new obstacle, which is the stalactite. The stalactite falls when a player or enemy triggers it by going underneath its shadow, and it deals a large amount of damage. I think it'll be cool to sort of lure enemies into this as a, as a trap, because it damages them as well. To the level generation, I added the ability to make single lines of hazards, so a row of spikes that you have to run through with invincibility, or a row of cobwebs that slow you down so you're more, more vulnerable to enemies in a, in a sort of choke point. I think they add a lot of interest to the levels. I also added the ability for the player's look direction to influence what they are trying to select for interactable objects. So you can now look around and pick what you want to pick up, and I think it feels a bit more natural. For the enemies, I added pick up priority rules now when the slime doesn't see the player, it can interact with other things like normal keys or the floor key, and it will go chase after them, or sort of guard them. This way I can have enemies in the long term that get distracted by other enemies, by objects. I want to make a food object that sort of distracts enemies at large, or I can make a big ogre enemy that kind of one-shots the player but is distracted by a slime, so you have to like create slimes to, to distract the, that enemy. I think this will create a cool sort of shifting dynamic within the ecosystem of the cave. I also added a couple of particles. When you pick up a gem, it can make a little star particle. When you shoot a bullet, it spawns little energy particles. When the flowers shoot the fire, they spawn little spark particles. Then I got started on the chest system. Um, so far I have two different types of chests, one being the normal common chest, which will give you gold keys, health potions, shield modules, armor, any sort of consumable object. And then the upgrade chest, which will give you long-lasting upgrades. It has a different color, it has a different little outline effect, and these objects will say give you more move speed, give you more damage, apply specific effects to the character. Magpie Bald commented on the last video, the game kind of reminded them of Nuclear Throne, which Nuclear Throne is a big inspiration, but something they noticed in Nuclear Throne that it does well is sort of unique upgrades. In Nuclear Throne, the upgrades are impactful, so each upgrade really feels game-changing when you get it. I think that's what I want to do with this game, and then the enemy scaling sort of gets slowly more difficult over time to sort of catch up with those big upgrades. The last big thing I worked on was the anomaly system. So the way I chose to do it is have sort of anomaly target groups and then specific anomalies, but it would be something like slimes gain a shield or skeletons deal double damage or something to that effect. Or I can even do interactable objects like static interactable objects become locked or are behind a price wall or something like that. So it sort of changes the player's priorities throughout the run. Okay, now I need access to a lot of money because all the interactables are locked. So I need to figure out a way to sort of like farm for gems. The whole game is seeded, so I think it'll be interesting to say like, okay, this one seed is really interesting because it makes these specific skeletons like way overpowered. If there's a way for the player to tackle that challenge in a new and interesting way, you can sort of beat that seed. But yeah, so that's about it for this week. I'm looking forward to making more enemies, and I feel like I'm finally at the part of the game where I've built most of the systems and can start building out the content of the game. I have a Discord if you'd like to join. I released two other games on Steam and I have one on iOS and Android. If you'd like to check them out, you can go to my official website, darkma.quest. You'll find all the links there. If you like the videos, subscribe to stick around. It helps a lot. And if you have any suggestions or feedback, um, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.